What's up guys, my name is Walter Fernandez and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, if you're not, welcome back. Alright guys, I'm not gonna lie, it's 5 in the morning, I have not gone to bed yet and uh, it's raining really badly right now in Malaysia. Uh, it's not supposed to be rainy season but it's raining every day so bear with the noise please. Um, it's not the best time for me to do this but I have been sitting on this video idea for way too long right now and um, I just wanted to tell you guys about my favorite camera that I bought last year. Now why would someone like me want to buy something like this? I come a background of using DSLR cameras which are namely this 700D or T5i that I'm recording with or my T1i which is the 500D. Both Canon Rebel cameras and there's absolutely nothing wrong with those cameras because I've been using them for years and in my opinion I've taken great photos with them. I've been using the kit lens for the longest time and I still manage to get good photos and that's the thing about it, right? It's not about the equipment. I say this ironically because I'm today I'm going to be talking about uh, why I decided to jump onto a tiny mirrorless camera like this. It has a lot of advantages like over the cameras that I've been using. Uh, if you come from someone who uses like pro level cameras, this might not seem that impressive to you. But I feel like the quality of convenience and a couple of other things would maybe change your mind about it. Anyways. This camera sports Canon's dual pixel autofocus which I think is amazing and my experience with this camera is that like I finally have a video camera that I could just set up, record and just like not care about like I, I just not care about the focusing when I'm in front of the camera just because it's just that good I just trust it. Uh, it doesn't have eye detect autofocus and stuff but like having face detect for a video I think for my level in photography and videography at this current moment it is good enough and so next thing I really like about this is the form factor of this because it's just so small it's very lightweight like you can pretty much bring it everywhere next thing I really like about this camera is the form factor it's really tiny as you can see it can almost fit in your jeans pocket if you really try it enough it will because it does for mine uh, but I'd say you'd be able to fit this in your jacket or in your sweater or whatever you wear. It's easy to carry around plus it doesn't look intimidating which is really important because if I'm bringing this around to like birthday parties or like family dinners or uh, I don't know, just as an everyday carry, it's good that it doesn't look intimidating then as an, I don't look like that DSLR guy at every party just like let me just whip out my camera and then everyone's just gonna be like oh okay, oh, the camera guy's here. If you do street photography and you want to remain conspicuous, this camera is great. Uh, you can pretty much just flip the screen and kind of just look down and it kind of feels like this TLRs or even like the SLRs. You can literally use it as a waist level viewfinder, kind of just keep it down and like, you know. Plus, it looks like a newbie camera, right? You know, you won't get like, yo, why are you bringing a professional camera? And they'd be like, ah, oh, okay, bringing a small touristy camera. Sure. Next thing is the mirrorless body. I have been a DSLR guy for the longest time but right now I love the mirrorless formats because it's not because of the I can see the exposure as it happens and stuff. I, I mean that is a plus but I actually love it because of the flange distance. distance between the sensor and the lens is much closer. Some people say it results in like sharper images and all but I really don't care about that. What I do care about is the fact that I have some film SLRs as well, some Canon film SLR lenses which are these FD lenses and now my lenses don't only have one use which is fitting on my film SLRs. I can use it on these cameras and get a different look as well. Another obvious thing is the EFM mount. I know uh, people say it's on the end of its life which uh, so be it the fact that I have the EFM mount here means I have access to a lot of currently available EFM lenses which obviously not many people are a fan of but I am because I only really care about a couple of lenses in this lineup I care about this 22 millimeter f2 lens which is the only EFM lens I own right now uh, but I plan to get the 32mm 1.4, I think that's what it is. I also plan on getting like some crazy 7 artisans lenses which are like, I don't know, they have a 35 f0.95 and a 
250 f0.95 which <laughs> it's crazy and i really want to use them i'm fine with using mental focus nowadays because this camera has focus speaking and the fact is even if i do not want to use the efm mount i could still use my efs lenses on it and ef lenses and fd lenses there's just a lot more lens choices than you think for this, at least for me. The video specs on this is nothing to shout about. There's 1080p, 60 frames per second. I love that. I don't use that a lot. I, there's no 4K. I don't need 4K, not for now. Not what I want to do on YouTube. I don't need 4K. Um, I understand if like that's what you need. And the last pro that I have for this camera is that I got it at a really good price. I got this at 700 ringgits, which in USD should be about uh, 700. Which in USD is pretty much less than 200 ringgit for the camera body only. And the lens was the same price as the camera body. I got it off the same person. Um, but on different occasions because like he sold this one and he sold this one. Generally, if you're buying this camera new, I think you're looking at around 400 ringgit. I'm not sure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just list the price here. This is what the price is. Now to what I don't really like about this camera. Firstly, it's the buttons and dials, the, the layouts of it. I've gotten used to it, but uh, you're expected to use the touchscreen a lot because there are not many dials on. So fun using it on a professional shoot may not be the best idea. Next is the build quality. I was actually surprised at how flimsy it felt the first time I held it but I have just chucked this in my bag like everywhere I go and nothing's happened to it yet so far great another thing is there is no mic input I know uh, a lot of people really like to have mic inputs for this camera so they can use it as a vlogging camera and stuff and I would agree with you um, fortunately I think it's not the most important thing but if it is important to you uh, this is not the camera for you obviously and this is one thing I find now this is another thing that I find I can't find anyone else complaining about this I don't think it's my copy of the camera because I used another friend's uh, M100 and there was the same issue I didn't bring it up to her so I don't know if like, she actually knows about this but I find that every time you crank the shutter up to at about one two thousandths of a second and above it's sort of I don't know if it's the readout speed or something but like it sort of has this weird vignetting at the top edge of the photo which um, I have no idea whether that's the issue of the readout or the issue of the shutter I'm I have no idea but there's a weird like vignetting over there and last but not least which something I'm actually not mad about is the fact that it doesn't have a viewfinder yes it would be great to have a viewfinder but I want this to be small and it is small i don't really mind not having a viewfinder oh yeah wait there's one more thing it's the grip I i've gotten used to it actually uh, but it's it's still not the it's not pleasant to hold but i've gotten used to it so yeah i wish i did i do wish that it was a little bit bigger no actually no i don't i want it to be small nah this is great all right so who do i think this camera is for i think this camera is for someone who if you're like me you have multiple lenses on different platforms and you kind of want to just use everything on this it's very versatile the fact that you can attach a lot of different kind of lenses on it it's great uh, I do not think this uh, I also think that this is great for someone who likes to who has who wants to have a camera just to bring out for like parties or like hangouts or just casual photography I do not think this is a professional camera I don't think this is something you want to bring on a professional shoot it's not that quick to operate because you don't have like multiple dials to do multiple things at the same time you kind of have to like touch one thing drag drag touch another thing drag if I want to adjust the ISO now touch this one and then drag again um, it's a little slow I think I think we've got to accept that certain cameras are built for specific purposes and I don't think a camera like this needs to be perfect in every way I think it serves its purpose really well and I have a lot of fun with it you can always push your boundaries with whatever you do uh, they're just tools in the end of the day use what you want to use I love this camera and I hope if you're thinking of getting this camera uh, I hope this helped you out anyways uh, like the video if you enjoyed this in uh,
comment if you like if you feel like I've missed anything or if you have the camera and you wanna add something to the conversation. And lastly, just subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this or if you're interested in photography or videography in general. I'm planning to do weekly videos after this. Comment below if you have any video suggestions for me to do. I would greatly appreciate them and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.